So first graders, welcome to a new social study lesson. We're still in chapter one. Today's lesson, lesson number four, why do we vote? So please get your book, Our Place in the World, and let's open page 30. All right, for this lesson, we will be learning about voting and why voting is important. As you see in this picture, what the student doing? As we see, they are probably in a gym or in a classroom, and they are voting for um something probably a field trip or a game so what they do they put their vote or they put their choices in a special box and then um we're gonna see what they are uh, looking for all right let's start voting matters voting is making a choice that can be counted voting is a way to be fair Everybody gets a chance to say what they want. A class wants to name their pet hamster. The choices are Fluffy and Doodle. Each student chooses the name he or she likes best. Each choice is one vote. The pet name with the most votes wins. So this is what the children voting for. They have the pet, uh, class pet and um, and they need to, uh, the hamster, and they want to give it a name. So either Fluffy or Doodle. Some kids wanted Fluffy, some wanted Doodle. So they decided to vote, means put your choice or write which name you prefer. And then what will happen, they will put all the names in the box, and then they will open all the papers, and they will count. So each vote counts. So we'll see how many kids voted for the name Fluffy and how many vote for the name Doodle. And the name with the most votes, the will will be the winning. So let's see. When you look at the title here, voting matters means making choice. Second words you don't know, I might think probably voting. All right, underlying clues that tell you what is voting. Voting is making a choice that can be counted. Choices can be taken in consideration. People listen to this choice. How can people vote? As we say, you put your choice and then we're gonna count how many person uh, vote for that choice. So why do people vote? People vote when they're not sure what choices people vote. So everyone get a chance to say and choose something. Let's go for next page. There are many ways to vote. People can vote in public. They can raise their hands or say their choices. When Americans vote for leaders, the votes are private. Americans don't have to tell others who they voted for. Voting is important. Voting is a way that citizens choose leaders fairly. So if you remember when we vote for presidents, they call it election. People go privately like that. No one see your voting and you choose um, the leader that you think will be uh, the best for the country. All right, let's go for next page. All right, we have topic and key details. So we always know the main topic or the topic is what the text is about. What's the idea of the text and details is the information that help us to understand this topic. So over here, we have something. We have the main topic is saying that voting is important. And then we have two boxes or two columns for key details. So one of them voting is a way to be fair because we get to choose, you put your choice, then people will count the choices and that will be how we choose that name, for example, or how to choose um, a person or a leader. Sometimes people don't win and then they get frustrated or disappointed, but that's, that's the only way to be fair. All right, so this is one detail. Vote, voting is a way to be fair. We're looking for another thing. So another detail from the text that when people vote, that helps people to choose their leader. So let's write this down. We can say that voting helps people their leader. OK. 
Okay. So the main topic is voting is important. Details, voting is a way to be fair and also helps people to choose their leaders. Okay. Let's go for the next activity. We're going to read page 30 till 35, and then we need to find the answer for this question. So main topic, voting is important. And then we have two details. Voting gives everyone an blank say. We're going to find out this. And then we're going to find another detail. All right. OK, so let's go and read. All right, why do we vote? Voting for choices. There are different ways to vote. You can raise your hands. You can write your vote on a paper. You can say yeah to vote yes or nay to vote no. Your class might vote on which, which field trip to go on. Each student gets to vote. That way it's fair for everyone. All of the votes are counted. The class will go on a trip with the most votes. So that's as we say, a way to be fair and to be equal that everyone get to choose. And then when we count the votes, that's the place that the children will go or the field trip that they choose. Bar graph. A graph can show how many people voted for a choice. This class voted on a field trip ideas. Four students voted as we see. So they have three different places the class voted for the field trip. So they have pumpkin patch, they have factory, and they have museum. So we're going to count the votes for each place or each field trip. And then, of course, the place with the most votes or most names or most choices, that would be the one that the kids will go. So over here, let's see. Four kids voted for museum. So four students voted to go to the museum. For the factory, we have five. So five students voted to go to the factory. And then for pumpkin patch, we have seven. Seven students voted to go to the pumpkin patch. Each line on a graph shows the votes. Pumpkin patch had the most votes, as you see, seven for the pumpkin patch, five for the factory, and four for a museum. So when we vote for field trip, that's what kids will put. They put their place that they choose. And then when everybody put their choice, they open the paper and they will count how many kids want a museum, how many kids choose factory and how many kids chose pumpkin patch. And we see from the graph that seven kids voted for pumpkin patch. That's mean this is the place that the children would like to go. All right, let's go for we vote for leaders. So that's something we do in classrooms. Also, if you look at it, I'm sure you do things like that at home, like when mom or dad ask you what you like for dessert or what do you like to do on the weekends? So probably your brother or sister will say a place and you will say a place. Mom and dad have some another place in mind and people vote to see who um, what's the place that got the most votes or most voices. All right, over here, we vote for leaders. A democracy is a type of government. In a democracy, people choose leaders by voting. Americans do not vote for every law. Instead, they vote for leaders. The person who gets the most votes becomes a leader. The leaders make laws for the people. The leaders make changes that the people want. So instead of voting for every law, either new laws or changing in a law that already exists, people uh, choose their leaders. And the leaders work on changing laws if need to, or adding laws or putting new laws. So sometimes people can vote to make or change a law. The mayor makes decision for the people of a city or town. So that's the leader that people vote and choose. A mayor is, a lead, is the leader of a town. A city council helps make laws. People vote for the mayor and the city council. So people vote to choose the mayor or city council. 
Council is a government, um, it's a government of city or schools or even other groups. The president is the leader of our country. People vote for the president and other government leaders. These leaders make choices for people. The day people vote is called election day. On election day, people choose who will be the mayor or the president. All right. Voting is a right. Remember when we say that everyone have a right and we were talking in a previous lesson about education is one of the rights for the students. Voting and choosing your leader is a right. In America, adult citizens have the right to vote. Adult, which is a person who is 18 years and older, have the right to vote. Voting gives everybody a chance to make a choice. Americans get to choose their leader of the government. In the past, not everyone could vote. There was a time when American women were not allowed to vote. Women wanted the right to vote. And this is a primary source. We covered that in a previous lesson. That women fought for the right to vote and won. So now women have the right to vote. All right, let's see the biography for Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Stanton. Strong women like Elizabeth worked to change voting laws. Stanton wanted women to have the right to vote. She led many women to help make the change. They had a big meeting about the problem. It took many years of hard work for the change that happened. Women were not allowed to vote in, na in national elections until 1920. So before 1920 or 1920, the year where only um, men were allowed to vote, women were not allowed. But nowadays things are different. Men and women have the same voting rights. Women help, women like Stanton help make that happen. She worked hard for equal rights. Equal rights mean people get the rights like each other. Doesn't matter your um, gender or color. All right. So let's go back to our activity, page 35, and fill the gap here. We have the main topic, voting is important. And now we have um, voting gives everyone an equal say. That's what we just read. So let's put this down. Equal. Equal say. And then we have to look for another detail. So when we vote, that will help people to choose their leader, right? Who will make choices on for us? So let's put this down. Okay. Voting helps us pick our leaders. Who we'll make choices for us? Either by changing an all, a law or make a new law or just add uh, something extra, okay? So voting helps pick, oops, pick our leaders who make choices for us. All right. Let's see what we have next. All right, page 36. What do we have here? We have what's voting. 
If you go back, you know that voting is a choice that can be counted and of course is a right for citizen. So we can write this if you go back to your page, um, I believe 31 or 32, you're gonna see that voting, it's making choices and also can be counted. So choices can be counted and it's a right. Let's write it down. So what's voting? Voting choice. That can be counted as we saw for our example when children vote for their field trip. And also we know that voting is a right. All right. All right, let's two things people can choose by voting. So we can say, for example, like leaders, we vote for leaders. We can write here. Two things people for vote for. So people could vote for leaders. And uh, um, classrooms, probably items like or field trips. Okay. Okay, let's see what we have here. Take a vote. What supplies does your classroom need? As a group, write three things that classroom needs. Then take a class-wide vote, record the results in a bar graph. So this is like something what we have in our book, in a previous activity that when we um, saw the vote for the children for their school trip. So you can go back and see the graph and then you can choose three items, probably a new carpet, um, a, new, a new clock and um, something else. And, um, a nice poster that you need to buy for your classroom. And then you can um, vote, ask the children to write down what they want. And then you're gonna open this voted or this, uh, this paper and count how many uh, children chose um, the poster, how many uh, children or students vote for the new clock. And then that's when you see that Yes, this item get more voices or more choices or more votes from students. And that's what we're gonna um, buy for our classroom. It's just fun activity, uh, probably, yes, yeah, a group, but you can have fun with your friends and play this game. All right, that's it for today's lesson, first graders. Thank you.